In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a load of things that just make life easier. I really think we're living in a world where busyness and stress have become almost cult-like. How often do you meet up with friends, family and colleagues and you ask them how they are and they're just like, oh, life's just so busy. I am so tired, I'm so stressed. Weeks just get away from me. I don't know how we're this far through the year. What, why are we living like this? We almost make life more difficult for ourselves because that's how we see other people operating. There's a better way. Life can be more effortless and more enjoyable if we have the right habits, routines, and systems in place. That means that we have more time to spend on the things we actually want to be doing, and life just becomes a whole lot more fun and enjoyable. So today I'm gonna to be sharing all of those things with you, and listen, I realize that a lot of the things I'm gonna be sharing today cost money. They are things that we can buy that make our life easier, they are services that we can pay for that just make things more seamless. So that is why my first piece of advice, and please don't switch off once you hear this, bring more money into your life. Now listen, before you switch off, <laughs> I realize that a lot of you are gonna just be rolling your eyes at this piece of advice and saying like, oh, thank you, Sarah, for just telling me, just telling me to earn more money. Now you've told me that my life's changed, I'm suddenly rich. I realize, I realize that it's not that simple, but, I'm telling you this from a place of, I've also been the person who has not had enough money at the checkout when I'm buying food and I've had to go and put everything back. I wonder how I'm gonna feed myself that week. I've been the person who has had zero money in the bank account, maxed out my overdraft, wondered how I'm gonna pay my, my rent, my bills for the month, whilst working, working extra jobs and things. It's stressful. It's really stressful to be in that position. Now I'm in a position where I have worked really hard to earn extra money to get myself out of that situation. I'm very fortunate that I have a good career, but you know, you can do this even without being a doctor. You can do this without having this career. I've built an online business, YouTube channel, which brings me some income. Doing things to bring extra money into your life to create a bigger gap between what you're spending versus what you're bringing in so that you have a safety net and you have the ability to feel more relaxed. Not having enough money is so damn stressful and you deserve better. Because I work shifts and my life can be a little bit unpredictable, I sometimes find it hard to keep up with things that need to be done regularly. And I used to find myself getting really overwhelmed. I would find that like a month or two would go by and I hadn't done loads of the cleaning tasks or other like routine things that needed to get done. So now what I do is I literally have a list on my phone of daily, weekly and monthly things that need to happen in our household. Make sure that I tick them off as I go along. I literally just have a list and tick them off. Things like cleaning my makeup brushes. It's one of those things that I really don't love to do, but I just have it on the list and I know it needs to get done. And then it feels really good to tick it off. Doing my own gel manicures and pedicures. I don't want to go out to the salon that regularly. <laughs> it's just too much effort for me. So I bought my own kit at home, learned how to do them. Outside of my work as a doctor, I have an online business and so when I am at home, working from home, doing that, I sometimes wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I don't need to like get myself up and dress today. I'm not gonna see anyone. It's just one of those days where I'm just gonna be behind the computer creating content or like doing things behind the scenes. And honestly, on those days, I've noticed that I am just not as productive. If I just stay in my like slouchy clothes, don't do my hair or makeup, and so what I have started to do is make sure that I'm up and dressed every day and I've given myself a little rule that I'm looking fine by nine and that just helps me stay on point and be productive throughout the days where I'm working from home. Working on my mindset and unlearning perfectionism. I used to be such a perfectionist and by that, I do not mean that I was perfect. No, far from it. I mean that I used to set myself unrealistically high standards and then struggle to meet those standards and then beat myself up when I couldn't. And I also, I also used to think that I had to do everything myself for it to be valid. I used to think that if I asked for help, it was a sign of weakness if I was showing that I couldn't figure it out on my own and get it done. Unlearning that has been really valuable because it has allowed me to ask for help when I need it, to build a bit of a support network around me. So um, learning to ask for that help and to delegate things you know be creative with this is there you know a friend a family member 
that you could ask to help with things and you in return can help them with something or maybe you can chore swap if there's a certain thing that you don't mind doing that they hate doing swap the chores and do them for each other do ask and maybe like a local teenager to wash your car or mow your lawn just come up with ideas and get creative about how you can ask for help doing the things that you don't love to do and that's time that you could be spending on things that you love with people that you love on spending with things that make a difference in the world and have an impact. If you're anything like I used to be and you run late all the time, then <laughs> let me tell you two things. One, there is a better way. And two, you will feel so much better when you can overcome this chronic late list. It is so annoying to run late all the time, isn't it? I used to just think like, oh, this is just me. This is just who I am. I run late. I used to think of myself as like an optimistic late runner because I was always trying to like optimistically fit more into my day before I left the house for something. I'd be like, oh yeah, sure. 15 minutes till I need to leave. I can like do a load of laundry and do all my makeup and sort my hair out and get dressed and pack a bag. <laughs> and of course I would run late. Things really started to change for me when I read Atomic Habits started using identity-based statements, which are just basically telling yourself, I am the kind of person who, and then your habits start to fall in line with that. So I would tell myself, I'm the kind of person who is early or on time to things. Now I really do plan properly to make sure that I get to places on time. And of course, I'm not perfect. I do run late sometimes still, but I've really got out of the habit of it. And you know, 80, 90% of the time, I'm early for things these days. Running early for things just makes life feel less stressful. I arrive, I feel serene, I'm not like scrabbling around. I used to literally run to work. When I was working at a bar when I was in uni, I used to like jog there because I was always late and I would arrive like sweaty <laughs> and exhausted. I have a rule that if someone pops into my head for whatever reason, I contact them. I just send them a quick message, no more than 30 seconds spent typing it out. Just, hey, how are you doing? This thing just reminded of me, me of you, or I just thought of you because of this. I just thought I'd check in and see how you are. That allows you to keep up with those relationships with people that you don't want to lose contact with. And I don't know if any of you have read that book, The Five Regrets of the Dying. In that book, one of the main regrets is not keeping in contact with people. This is just such an easy, easy way to do that, to make sure that you're maintaining those relationships, just those little check-in points. And on that note, when I meet up with my best groups of friends, we have a rule that we always have the next date scheduled in before we leave seeing each other that time because that way you know you're gonna get to see each other again, you know you've got that scheduled time together because as we all know, life happens and you can end up doing that thing where you're like, oh, we should meet up, oh, we should meet up, and it just doesn't actually make it into the diary. Planning that next date in and always having something else booked in the diary is a really lovely way to stay in contact and keep those people a priority who really mean a lot to you that you want to spend more time with. One thing that I've started doing in the last couple of years to make myself a bit more organized, to make things a little bit easier for leaving the house, is I have a box in my wardrobe that I keep things in that I'm gonna want to put in my handbag. Because every time I come home, I empty my handbag and put all the things that I need in that box. So things like hand cream, hand sanitizer, a pen, purse, an umbrella, spare bags, just the things that you might want to just shove in your handbag before you leave for somewhere. And another thing that I do that I found really helpful recently is I've got this makeup bag and I just put some essentials in it, things that are probably going to get transferred from bag to bag. So in here, I'll just show you quickly, um, I've got hand sanitizer and it's a fancy one because I like the smell of it. Lip gloss, perfume, some tissues and some hand cream and this is just super easy to chuck in a tote bag and then I've got all the little things that normally float around in my handbag all together in one place. Makes life so much easier, so much more organized. You can just grab it and go. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you who are creative can re relate to this, but I'm the kind of person who can get really excited about new ideas and I can end up jumping from thing to thing, getting a bit of shiny ob object syndrome. What that can mean is that I get so busy starting the new project and taking on all the new exciting things to go with that, that I don't end up completing the initial thing that is important that I've been working on. Bit of self-sabotage, probably. What I have now is a now list. I have like three main goals, three to five main goals that I'm working on over the next 60 days. And I have a not right now list. So things that I might be excited about that are things that 
I want to pursue in the future, but that I'm just going to put on the back burner for the time being. And I write them in my not right now list so that I remember them, so that it frees up that mental energy, so that I'm not thinking like, should I be working on this? Should I be working on this? No, I know what I need to be working on and the rest can wait. Having a system around birthday cards, birthday presents, getting gifts for people. So my system is that I have a list, of course I have a list, that I keep updated of ideas for gifts for people. So if I'm with someone and they mention that they like something, then I pop it on the list so that if I need to get them a gift in the future, that that is a nice idea for them. Second thing that I always do is for people's birthdays and events that are coming up, anniversaries and things like that, put the date in my Google calendar. I also set a reminder for seven days before and that prompts me to write the card or buy the gift and order it. Also write the year. So I write the year that that person was born or the year of the anniversary. Then I'm not thinking like, oh, how old is that person's child? Or how old is that person? Is it a big birthday that's coming up? Is it a big anniversary? I just know. I've got it in the diary. I don't have to think about it. I've got that auto reminder set up. It's about freeing that mental space. I know that none of this is like really groundbreaking stuff, like putting some dates in a diary. But as someone who sometimes has a bit of a, like a chaotic, disorganized brain, these little things make so much difference. On that note, I also have a designated cupboard, I'll show you, where I keep things like wrapping paper, cards. Okay, it's a bit messy in here, but um, I have like a box of cards in here um, that I keep stocked up with like cards for pretty much all occasions and then um, loads of books of stamps and then I also have in here um, like gift gift bags for bo bottles of wine that kind of thing and I have a couple of board games and like fun things so if we have kids over to the house we've got lots of friends and family who've got young children so we have things like this just like a bubble machine that I picked up from TK Maxx and a couple of other like little board games and fun things that we can do when we have people over and then I also have some generic gifts so things like I have a this beautiful scented candle. I bought a few of these so that if we go to a dinner party or we've got like a last minute present that we need to give to somebody, this can be part of that so that I'm not having to like dash out and go to the shops at the last minute. Something else that has been so helpful and made my life easier is not making decisions at the wrong time. So not making rash, rash decisions. I have a rule that I don't make decisions when I am tired or when I'm overwhelmed because then I end up making decisions that I later regret and I end up having to like undo the, the decision that I've made and it just makes life more complicated. Something that has been so helpful in me creating an easier, more effortless life in the last few years is learning to um, overcome my people-pleasing tendencies. I'm the kind of person who I used to just like put everyone's needs above my own. I didn't even factor my own wants and needs into anything. I was the kind of person that would just say yes to everything, just put every everyone else above myself. And honestly, it's exhausting. And I would end up feeling like overburdened and resentful and annoyed. And it's no one else's fault but mine <laughs> because I'm the one that has, has said yes to it all. Learning to overcome that has been one of the best things I could possibly have done for myself. My self-care needs are so important and I realize that now I put them first so that I can then go out into the world and be the best this sounds so cheesy but like be the best version of me you know I'm a better doctor when I look after myself really well I'm a better friend when I look after myself really well I'm a better wife I'm a better daughter you know all of those roles that I play I am better at, better at when I make sure that my needs are met first. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I coach people on now. So if this is something you're interested in, then have a look at the description box down below. I can help you with that. Using a meal delivery service. Oh my goodness, this has been so helpful. I've tried a few of these. We've always used HelloFresh in the past. Absolutely loved that. So good. Recently we've tried out Gusto because one of my friends sent me a code for it so that we could get some free meals. We get five meals a week, so we get our midweek meals all sorted. It just means that I don't have to think about what to cook. The other thing that I do with meals, which is super helpful, is I have this we weekly meal planner that I just write our meals on. Yes, we have a disco ball in our kitchen. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, weekly meal planner. I write our meals on here. It's so helpful. Let me just flip my camera. So you can see some examples of like our previous meals. Literally just write down our meals down here shopping list down here it just makes life so easy this must have been a week when we had friends to say something like that but yeah makes life very easy and organized just look at the menu for the week and know what we're going to have Prince is quite a picky eater or maybe he just has a very refined palate but either way there are a lot of things that he doesn't eat and so that is quite a struggle to find meals that we both actually enjoy so i have this running list of things that we both love meals that we both love i've got um breakfast lunches dinners and snacks on there and if i find a meal that we both enjoy then i make a note of that put it on there i if it's from a recipe book then i write down the book and the page number on there when i come to meal planning if I'm not using the meal delivery box or I'm just like planning for our weekends or you know anything else like that then I just scroll through this list and select a few from there with Vince's help and yeah just makes life a lot easier okay this one is a little bit ridiculous but it really works for me I'll show you what it is so we have laundry bins this is our utility room we have a couple of laundry bins in here that are for used dog towels put this label on here and used cloths and tea towels so I don't like putting dog towels in with our regular washing because it's gross but I also don't always want to just wash them straight away same goes for cloths and tea towels I don't want them going in our regular washing and so having these bins is really helpful and in them I have these laundry bags that I just bought from Amazon that are super helpful so I just um yeah once the laundry but once i'm ready to put the wash on i zip up the laundry bag shove that in the washing machine and then dog hair and everything else isn't going onto all of our clothes afterwards okay another note about laundry this one's a game changer for me again does not apply to everyone but if you are a person who wears a sports bra this may be very useful for you. So I have multiples of this sports bra. It's one that I bought, bought in a multi-pack on Amazon. It's really good. I use it all the time. I think I have like, I have several of them. So useful. But it has inside it these little pads. These, you'll know what I mean if you're someone who wears a sports bra. When you put them in the laundry, put them in the washing machine, those pads always make their way out of the sports bra and into the washing machine and they're a nightmare to put back into the sports bra. It's just really annoying until I found this little life hack, which are these, these laundry bags specifically for bras. So you just fold your sports bra in half, pop it into this bag. I can fit two in a bag. They, these bags come in a pack of two. They wash beautifully. You get your laundry out and they are perfectly clean and the pads never come out they are so useful i also have loads of these laundry bags which are just these mesh bags with a zip that you put your laundry in it's so helpful so i put all of my underwear into these bags for the reason that number one your bra clips don't get caught on the rest of your laundry which is very annoying and secondly it's really nice when you get the wash load out to just have all your underwear in one bag and then you can hang up all your clothes and then dry your underwear. It's just, I don't know, it's just useful. It seems to save me a lot of time. Getting really clear on what your priorities are and then saying no to everything that doesn't align with that. And when you say yes to things, it's what I call a full body yes. It's like a hell yeah. It's a I can't wait to do that thing. And then you're not feeling like stuck or tied into things that you didn't really want to say yes to. Factoring in relaxation and proper downtime into your schedule. A few years ago, I got myself into a position where when I was having time off, that time off was spent doing things for other people, also doing chores and all my responsibilities and catching up on all my life admin. I had zero, and I mean zero, time for myself. You know what, I didn't even have enough time to get a full night's sleep every night. I was so busy all the time. And it just led to this path of burnout. So now I try to, when I'm filling in my schedule and planning my month and planning my week, schedule in downtime, relaxation time, guilt-free relaxation and I put the word guilt-free in because it's so important because we can get ourselves into this mindset that time off 
means we still have to be productive. My friend Lauren introduced me to the concept of having a brain dump where you literally just write down everything that is on your mind, get it all out onto paper, because often we're just storing all this stuff in our head, all these to-dos, anything that's stressing us out, ideas, exciting things, things we need to remember, it's all just swirling around in our head getting it down and onto paper is so freeing and it just makes life a lot easier. Having set days of the week for self-care and workouts. So I have a little self-care routine, basically like a personal grooming routine that I do, which includes things like my fake tan, doing my nails, like doing a hair mask, doing a face mask, all these kinds of things. I do them all on a Thursday because for me that just works. I get it done before the weekend, then I go into the weekend looking fine, feeling fresh, feeling like my most confident self. These are the things that I personally like to do to feel good. It doesn't need to be the same for you. Having a bit of a routine around it makes it easier and removes the decision fatigue of thinking like, should I do my fake tan today? Should I do my nails? Like, no, I know it's Thursday, that's when I do it. And same with workouts. I have come up with a bit of a workout routine. So um, I like to work out three days a week as a minimum. And that is like my bare minimum. And if I can do any more, fantastic in an ideal world I'd work out every day because my body feels it's best when I work out every day but every day I go for at least a 20 minute walk that's kind of a non-negotiable because I have a dog and so she needs that my workouts my set days I do Monday Wednesday Friday Monday run day I go for a run Wednesday wings day I do arms workout Friday thighs day I do legs workout it's as simple as that and then anything else on top of that is a bonus that, again, is just a way of taking that decision fatigue out of it and not thinking like, should I work out today? I don't know. It's like, no, it's Friday. Get your legs down the gym and do a workout. A huge leap in my personal development has been hiring a business coach. Oh my goodness. I think this one kind of links back to the thing that I talked about earlier in this video about asking for help. Having someone on my side who is helping me with my specific goals and problems, helping me get my mindset right about it, helping me really understand the foundational things of my business has been transformational. I am repeating this one from my video, 30 things I wish I'd known in my 20s, because it's worth repeating. Having a home for everything in your house, making sure that every object has a place that it lives, because it just makes tidying so much easier and I would even go so far as to saying that labelling that place sometimes is very very helpful. I'm just going to give you an example. So in these cupboards over here that we've got for our TV unit, in those bottom cupboards, Vince and I have our yoga mats and we have some weights in there because we like to do our little workouts in the lounge. And then I'm also going to repeat something that I said in my in that video don't put it down, put it away. It takes just as long to put something down as it does to put it away because it will save you in the future time tidying that thing up and creating clutter around your house. One of the things that I find adds stress to my life is visual clutter. When there's just things lying around, it just makes me feel a little bit overwhelmed. And you know, when you've had a busy week and you work a busy job, having loads of clutter and stuff everywhere just feels awful. You just want to like live in a peaceful, relaxing, calm environment. Another thing that is really helpful for reducing clutter in a house, and I'm not gonna say keeping clutter free because let's be honest, I do not live a clutter free lifestyle. Reducing that clutter is important, is having regular clear outs. So every month on my little schedule that I have for myself is a certain designated place to clear out. And you know, you can be really quick. You can try and do it in 10 minutes, half an hour. Pull out the stuff, donate what you don't want, get rid of things that are broken, or fix them and clear some of the space in that area. This one's really basic, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Getting these little pill packets to put your vitamins in is so handy, or if you need to take tablets for any conditions, so, so helpful just to remember to take them because I am that kind of person that will remember to take my vitamins like twice a week otherwise. Fill them up on a Sunday, take them through the week with breakfast super easy. If you're like me and you're someone who travels a lot, then you're going to like this one. So we are often away at the weekends. We go and visit friends. We go to a lot of weddings, that kind of thing. And we seem to always be away at the weekends. And so I have a travel wash bag that I just have packed and ready to go. Whenever I come back from a trip, I replenish it if there are things that need topping up. So I have like a little 
travel toothbrush that I take with me and travel size um, bottles of my face wash, my body wash, moisturizer, all of those kinds of things packed and ready to go for our next trip. And then I also have this little travel bag and I put in it things like fresh pyjamas, my eye mask and some earplugs, lip balm, stuff that I know I'm going to take with me. And I have that packed and ready to go always so that when it comes to just packing for that weekend away, all I really need to put in there are the outfits that I'm going to be taking with me for that trip. And on that note, I also keep lists of stuff that I'm going to probably need four weekends away and for a whole week away so that when I'm packing I can just go through that list and tick things off it so things like charger hair dryer if it's a week away straighteners you know just all the things that are like little bits and pieces that you might forget and it saves you that mental fatigue of having to think of a new list every single time it's just there saved on my phone and ready to go these are so handy these are the stackable pots from trini london and the makeup itself is quite expensive compared to like high street brands but it is really good quality makeup and the best thing about them is that they unscrew you've got your little pot there and then they click apart so you can just take like one thing on its own or you can stack the whole lot together. So for example, this top one's empty, but this second one, I've got a tinted moisturizer in, foundation thing, then I've got a blusher, um, some bronzer, some highlighter, and then an eyeshadow at the bottom. And then I just chuck that in my makeup bag with some powder and some mascara and some eyeliner and I'm good to go. If it's in your budget, it is so worth spending the money on electric blinds. We have four windows in our bedroom. Very lucky to have a nice, naturally light, bright room. And having electric blinds makes life so much easier. 100% recommend. If it's not in your budget, save up. Well worth it, absolute game changer. Figure out ways that you can easily incorporate more fruits and vegetables into your diet. And one of the ways that I like to do this is through smoothies. So I have a smoothie most mornings as well as my breakfast. I don't use it to replace a meal. We have frozen fruits and vegetables because it's just so easy. Listen, I can't finish this video without saying this one because I am someone who preaches that you should take exquisite care of yourself. So taking the best possible care of yourself is absolutely vital if you want an easy, relaxing, happy life, getting to bed a bit earlier, having a really good quality sleep. That is just so important for your physical and mental health. Exercising, eating well, staying hydrated. How many times have I thought to myself like, oh, I've got a bit of a headache and I feel quite tired. And then I have a big drink of water and everything's fine and the world's all right again. Just taking really good care of yourself is such a cornerstone of a convenient and happy life. All right, so that leads me to the end of this video. It's been an absolute pleasure. Now, if you have something that makes your life easier and more convenient, please, I'm begging you, leave it in the comments below because I for one want to hear about it. I'm always looking for ways to make my life more simple and less busy and more convenient, free up that mental energy, create some clarity and space in my life. And for anyone who is watching this video, they also want to hear it too. So we all need it. Leave it in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, then I'm going to leave this video right here for you that you are absolutely going to love, which is 30 things I wish I had known in my 20s. Until next time, have a great week. Take exquisite care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.